So part A wants us to express 1 over p multiplied by 11 minus 2p in partial fractions. So the way that we write something in partial fractions is to start off with, we write out our original expression, which is 1 divided by p multiplied by 11 minus 2p. And then what we do is if we look at the denominator of this expression, we have something, p, multiplied by something else, uh, 11 minus 2p. And what we do is we can just split up this fraction into these two separate components and add them. So we'd start off with an unknown, which we can call a, divided by p, plus, and then another unknown, which we can call b, over 11 minus 2p. So we've just split up the denominator of this original fraction uh, into two sections. So what we do now is we want to get rid of all of these fractions. So if we multiply everything by p bracket 11 minus 2p, this will do this. So we're left with 1 equals a bracket 11 minus 2p plus b p because in a over p the two p's cancelled out and in b over 11 minus 2p the two 11 minus 2 p's cancelled out and we're left with just p. So now we have this we can't just solve it straight away because we have an a and a b as well as a p so we can't solve it straight away but what we can do is we can say that when p is equal to zero bp is also equal to zero and therefore we're only left with a and so this can help us find a so if we say p is equal to zero we're left with one minus and then 11 minus 2p when p is equal to zero is just 11 so we're left with 11a and as i said before bp just turns to zero so we can now find a is equal to 1 over 11 if we divide both sides by 11 and now we can do the exact same thing to find b so we want to set this 11 minus 2p equal to 0 uh, and the number we need uh, to make this 0 is 11 over 2 uh, so if we say that at p is equal to 11 over 2 still 1 equals but then we get a multiplied by 0, which is 0, plus bp, which is now turned to 11 over 2b. And if we times both sides by 2 and divide by 11, we get that b is equal to 2 over 11. So now what we can do uh, is to write the original expression as partial fractions. Um, we can write it one of two ways. Uh, the first way, and the way that I'll do it, is that if a is 1 over 11, we have a over p and then b is 2 over 11 so we have b over 11 minus 2p. Uh, another way you can write it uh, is that this 11, the two 11s on the bottom here, um, can actually be brought down to the denominator of the fraction so we could have written it as 1 over 11p plus 2 over 11 multiplied by 11 minus 2p um, but they are equivalent so you could have written it either way. So there are three marks available for this question. Um, a first mark comes from actually setting 1 over p multiplied by 11 minus 2p equal to a over p plus b over 11 minus 2p um, so we get a mark for that and then we get a further method mark for substituting p equals 0 and p equals 11 over 2 into this um, expression. So this will get us our second mark. And then finally, we get an answer mark for um, getting the right um, answer, which again could be either of these, and they're both stated in the mark scheme. So you could have written either of those to get our third mark. The population of meerkats is being studied. The population is modelled by the differential equation dp by dt is equal to 1 over 22p multiplied by 11 minus 2p, where t is greater than or equal to 0 and p is greater than 0 and less than 5.5, where p in thousands is the population of meerkats and t is the time measured in years since the study began. Given that there were a thousand meerkats in the population when the study began, Part B wants us to determine the time taken in years for this population of meerkats to double. So the first thing we want to do uh, for a question like this is if we write out the differential equation, 
Uh, so dp by dt is equal to 1 over 22p multiplied by 11 minus 2p. Uh, what we can actually do is we can rearrange this by, if we divide both sides by this right hand side and then multiply both sides by dt, um, we're left with 22 over p multiplied by 11 minus 2p dp is equal to dt, or 1 times dt, which is just dt. And now what we can do, uh, because we've done this, is we can write it like this uh, as integrals. So first, if we focus on integrating the left hand side, first thing we want to do is split this up into partial fractions. And we can do this quite easily because of what we did in part A. So in part A, we wrote that 1 over p multiplied by 11 minus 2p can also be written as 1 over 11 over p plus 2 over 11 over 11 minus 2p. Uh, so you can see that this and this are very similar in, in form. Um, the only difference is that this is this one multiplied by 22. So if we do that and we multiply everything by 22, we can say that 22 over p minus p times by 11 minus 2p can be written as 2 over p plus 4 over 11 minus 2p. Uh, and so if we write that here and we split it up into partial fractions, because this becomes a lot easier for us to integrate when we write it as 2 over p plus 4 over 11 minus 2p dp. And then the right hand side stays the same. Um, so again, if we stick to the left hand side, integrating the left hand side, um, and we start with 2 over p. Uh, now, the way we integrate this is we can write it as 2 ln p. Uh, and the reason we know this is because of the general formula that says that the integral of 1 over x dx um, is equal to ln x, uh, a log of x. Uh, and we can do the exact same thing, just replacing x with p. Uh, and 1. This is essentially 1 multiplied by ln of x. So we just replace that with a 2. Now to do the next one, it's a little bit trickier, but it's a similar principle in that if we write it over on the side, that we can do it, write it the same as we did before as 4 ln 11 minus 2p. But then what we also have to do is divide by the different, the derivative of what's inside the bracket and the, deri the derivative of 11 minus 2p is minus 2. So this divided by minus 2 is equal to minus 2 ln 11 minus 2p and that's the integral. Um, so if we write that in as minus 2 log 11 minus 2p and then the integral of 1 is just t and we have to remember plus c because this is indefinite integration. So we always have to have a plus c. So we can add that in here. So now what we want to do is find the unknown. So we want to find out what c is so we can go further. Uh, and the way we can do this is because of some of the information that we were given in the question. So in the question, we were told that there were a thousand meerkats when the study began, which is essentially telling us that when t was equal to zero, p was equal to 1. Uh, and the reason p is 1 and not 1,000 is because we were also told that p is measured in thousands. So p is 1. Uh, and we can substitute this into the equation that we've just found uh, so we can find c. So when we, if we say that p is equal to 1 and t is equal to 0, and we write that 2 log 1 minus 2 log of 11 minus 2 times 1, which is just 9, is equal to 0 plus c. We can write that c is therefore equal to minus 2 log of 9. Uh, and the reason it, it's, it can be written like this uh, is because we know because of the laws of logs that this can be written as 2 log 1 over 9 um, because we can do this divided by this because of the negative sign. Uh, and 1 over 9 
is also written as 9 to the power of minus 1. Uh, and another law of log states that we can bring powers, we can multiply them by the number in front. So we can write this as minus 2 log of 9. And that's why we can write C like that. So if we write this back into the equation and replace C with um, minus 2 log of 9, we're left with this equation here that we can now find a value of p for any value of t or vice versa. Uh, and because in question, in part b, we want to find the time taken in years for the population to double, um, a double population means that we want to find the time when there are 2,000 meerkats. Uh, and because p is in, thousand, in thousands, we want to find the point where p is equal to 2, because that is two, a population of 2,000. Now, if we substitute these values in, so 2 log of 2 minus 2 log of 11 minus 4, which is 7, is equal to t minus 2 log of 9, and we put this into our calculator uh, and rearrange, we find that t is equal, uh, and this is to 3sf, to 1, Point eight nine years. Now, this is quite a long question and it's worth six marks. Um, and our first mark comes from up here for separating the variables uh, into the dp and the dt. And then we get a further method mark for using what we found in part a, so this bit with the partial fractions. Uh, and integrating this equation here. Uh, and then we get a uh, an answer mark for actually integrating it correctly and getting the right numbers um, over here. Uh, now we get a further method mark for substituting in t equals 0 and p equals 1 and then finding what c is. So this gets us another mark. Uh, and then we get another method mark for substituting in p equals 2. Uh, and then lastly, we get an answer mark for finding that the time taken was 1.89 years to 3SF. And that's all six marks. So part C wants us to show that P is equal to A over B plus C E to the power of minus a half T, where A, B and C are integers to be found. So the first thing we want to do for this question is write out the equation we found in part B that involved P and T. Uh, as a starting point and that equation was 2 log of p minus 2 log of 11 minus 2p is equal to t minus 2 log of 9 and what we want to do with this uh, is use the laws of logs to try and rearrange and simplify this a little bit so first off if we focus on the left hand side we can write this as 2 log p divided by 11 minus 2p because of the law that says that if we have a minus sign, if we have one log take away another, we can do this divided by this uh, and kind of combine them as one, which is what we've done here. And then this is equal to t minus 2 log 9. So now if we add 2 log 9 to both sides, we actually can use another law of log that states that if we're adding two logs together, we can multiply the numbers. So we can multiply this, this whole thing, and nine. Uh, and this fraction, p over 11 minus 2p multiplied by nine, gives us 9p over 11 minus 2p. And this is still equal to t. Uh, and now if we divide both sides by two, so we can have the log on its own, we have log 9p over 11 minus 2p is all equal to a half t. Now, what we can do to get rid of this um, log uh, and to make p the subject, which is what we want to try and do um, because we have p equals something up here, uh, is we can take everything um, to the power of e. So e to the power of log of 9p over 11 minus 2p is equal to just 9p 
over 11 minus 2p, because um, that's what happens, they cancel. And here we have e to the power of a half t. So if we want to rearrange this a bit further, if we multiply both sides by 11 minus 2p, so we don't have any fractions, and then if we want to multiply out that bracket, if we do two steps in one, and multiply out this bracket of 11 minus 2p, multiply by e to the power of a half t, we have 11 e to the power of half t minus 2p e to the power of a half t. So now, uh, if we get all the terms involving p on one side, uh, if we get them all onto the left side, so if we add 2p e to the power of a half t to both sides, uh, and if we do two steps in one, and we also factorise out the p, we're left with p bracket 9 plus 2e to the power of a half t. And this is still equal to 11 e to the power of a half t. So now, if we want to get p on its own, which we do, because if we look back up at the form they want us to give it in, we have p equals and then everything else. So if we divide both sides by 9 plus 2e to the power of a half t, we find that p is therefore equal to 11 e to the power of a half t all divided by 9 plus 2e to the half t. Now, you may be able to see we're getting closer to the form that the question wants us to give it in, but we're not quite there yet because for us, we have a numerator that has an e to the power of a half t term in it, uh, and that is not the case in the form that we want it to be finally in. So to get rid of the e to the power of a half t, um, what we can do is if we multiply the right-hand side by e to the power of minus a half t over e to the power of minus a half t. Uh, and the reason we don't have to do this to the left hand side is, well, we can, but we don't need to write it in because e to the power of minus a half t divided by itself is equal to one. So we're essentially multiplying by one, um, but it can help us get rid of this e to the power of a half t term on the top. Um, so on the top, these cancel out and we're left with just 11. And on the bottom, on the denominator, we get 9e to the power of minus a half t plus 2, because the e to the power of a half t here cancels out 2. Uh, and now if we just write it in the form that the question gave it us in, which is to write it as 2 plus 9e to the power of minus a half t, as opposed to the other way around, we now have it in the form that the question wants and we can just to be even more clear we can say that a is equal to 11 b is equal to 2 and c is equal to 9. Now there are only three marks available for this question uh, and they come from number one comes from using the log laws right up at the top uh, to eventually find this expression here log of 9p over 11 minus 2p is equal to a half t. That's our first method mark. And we get a further method mark for trying to make p the subject, which is what we've done for this whole bit over here. So we get a method mark for all of this. Um, put it there. And finally, we get an answer mark for finding that a is 11, b is 2, and c is 9. So we can say that we've got our third and final answer mark from there.